Welcome to the third episode of YBOT's WeTV. That's Western Entertainment Television. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jenna Gonzalez. And I'm John Carroll. For some of you, getting your annual flu shot is nothing out of the ordinary. But with such a rise in flu cases this year, it's hard to question how effective these shots are. Let's join Travion Thomas on the story everyone is talking about. Hi, I'm Travion Thomas, and I'm outside of the Santa Cruz Center to learn more about the flu that is spreading around WMU. In the United States, each year, 5% to 20% of people will get the flu. More than 200,000 people are hospitalized from the complications of the flu, and 36,000 people will die from the flu, according to JustFlu.com. How are you? Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing great. So I just have a couple of questions. So okay. how do you feel about the flu that's going around WMU? The flu? I really have not heard about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> you haven't heard about the flu? Like, it's like the most talked about thing on campus. I know a few people who are sick, but I didn't know it was going around. Have you talked to anybody about what tips to give the students about how to stay protective of it? I have not. I've seen the signs on doors. What are they? Um, just if you're sick, stay home and wash your hands and just try not to spread the germs. It can be transmitted in the droplets and moisture from coughing and sneezing. You can pass the disease up to one day before symptoms start up until five days after symptoms begin according to JustFlu.com. Well, tell me, how do you feel about the flu that's going around WNU? Um, I mean, I know a lot of people who are sick, so it's kind of like almost scary, because if you get it, there's no way, like, you, it's not like you can go to class or anything like that, so if you get it, you miss a lot of school, and you miss a lot of information, even just missing one day, you can miss, like, almost a week's worth of information, so, um, I think that it's good that they're putting up signs to tell people to stay home and that teachers are being more, uh, like, okay with you missing class if you have the flu, so it doesn't spread up. The flu is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza viruses. It can cause mild to severe illness and at times can lead to death, according to JustFlu.com. Have you ever experienced yeah, I caught it a couple times. Uh, once when I was seven, and then another time when I was twelve. What were the symptoms? Uh, I was really hot. Um, I couldn't keep no food down. Uh, I was just really tired. Really hot. Yeah. 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 I'm Travion Thomas reporting for WE TV. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Probably, but not, not, not enough to know about it. Are you familiar with the public media network on the third floor of this building at all? Yes. They provide free public broadcasting to the city. I had no idea. Public media network, have you heard of it? Oh, the one that's upstairs and... Yeah, well, I, I'm... <laughs> Kind of show? Or um, I was I was watching. Um, is it uh, Mrs. Miss Jones? Uh -huh. Okay. And when I called her up, she invited me on her program. So, oh. so I'm just speaking with her to show her some of my material. Okay, 19, 20, 21, 95, and 99. And yes, I have. Yeah. So if you guys want to make your own TV show or radio broadcast, it's free. Get to use the equipment I'm using right now. That's rad. My family likes making movies and yeah. stuff and videos for like, you know, YouTube and stuff. And so we have to borrow their cameras like a lot. We uh, just last Thursday we took a uh, lesson on how to do the radio. 
so we can do like radio dramas and stuff. So we use Peterman a lot. Um, do you know if a lot of people use it? Um, no, I don't know, but if they don't, they should. <laughs> President Obama will honor six victims of the Newton, Connecticut tragedy with the Citizens Medal in a ceremony next Friday at the White House. According to CNN, in announcing the honor, the White House said the names of six courageous women were forever etched into the heart of our nation as unthinkable tragedy swept through Newton, Connecticut. WMU students held a fundraiser in late January to assist in whatever way possible. On January 16th, CAB WSA and the majority of WMU's Greek fraternities held a fundraiser to raise money to be sent to Newtown, Connecticut. My name is Kayla Morgan, reporting from the Bernhardt Center at WMU Remember Sandy Hook Benefit. Today, WMU students are raising money for the family of victims in Newtown. Freshman Sarah Shook and many other WMU students volunteer their time selling t-shirts, carnations, and stuffed animals. Shook said she wanted to do anything she can for the families in Newtown, Connecticut. I can't imagine going through what they're going through, whether or not they lost a child, but that bravery to send your child back to school and, and keep going. So I thought this was an awesome event to help out. The money raised is going to a social work organization in Newtown, where it will be distributed to the families of victims and first responders. Shook said WMU students had an awesome response to the fundraiser. Basically everyone stops, they get a little curious because they see like ducks and you know, and bears and everyone basically that has passed has either written a postcard or bought a flower or a t-shirt or made a stuffed animal. Um, and I, I, I don't think I've ever been more proud to go to Western than I was today. Professors from multiple disciplines at WMU are presenting lectures at the Lee Honors College every Wednesday at noon. This week's, this week's lecture will be presented by Steve Bertman, entitled Climate Change in the Energy Transportation Sector. The climate change chats are free and open to the public. Parking is available between the Wilbur, on Wilbur Street between the Fetzer Center and the Wesley Foundation. Presented on the screen is the calendar of the remaining events. So, I don't know about you, John, but I've been trying to get my spring break body ready here. <laughs> well, me too. I've been trying to hit the wreck, you know, get my bikini bot on, you know. <laughs> well, um, I have some exciting news for you that may give you that more motivation to hit the wreck, actually. <laughs> what do you got for me? Check it out. With so many busy schedules and not enough hours in the day, many WMU students were finding it hard to fit a workout into their daily routines. But this spring semester, the Student Recreation Center has announced extended hours to accommodate to students' busy lives. The rec will now be open Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. to 11 at night. YBOT got the chance to talk to Trey Wanicki and David Reed, two WMU students who said the new hours allows for more study time and less crowd for a late night workout. Time to be able to come later, and when you come later, there's less people here. It makes it more open and more leeway in what you do. It's um, great that the rec is open late because now we get our study done before we come to work out. 
We also got the opportunity to talk to Cody Potter, the facility manager of the rec, who says the rec had to add about 20 new associates this semester as part of the extended hours. Yeah, we're usually, like right now, it's 1030, so it's actually a pretty busy facility right now. Yeah, recently we added about 20 associates this, this coming semester. Potter also says the new hours implemented this semester will be put into the students' hands to decide whether or not they should be installed as permanent hours of operation for future semesters. So take advantage of the Student Rec's extended hours and start getting your spring break body rocking. Reporting for YBLT here at the Student Rec, I'm Jenna Gonzalez, connecting you to WMU. Yes, Valentine's Day is here. Be prepared to empty your wallets, eat lots of chocolate, and maybe even snuggle a bit. <laughs> How corny, Jenna. <laughs> Whatever, Don. Follow WeTV's reporter, Julene Winborn, as she dishes on some fun ideas you can use this Valentine's Day. You should take some tips, John. Hey guys, I'm Julian Wimborn reporting for WeTV. As you may know, Valentine's Day is coming up and come along with me. I can show you some great, fun, and affordable Valentine's Day date ideas. If you and your Valentine are looking for a romantic, classy getaway, you can try going to Henderson Castle located on the corner of Monroe and West Main. The castle has a variety of activities for you and your date such as a seven-course romantic dinner, hot tub, couple's massage, and a slow dance in the grand ballroom. Bonjour, my name is François Moyer. I am the owner of the Anderson Castle in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We are located at the Hollywood Monroe. The castle is not only a site of beauty, but a historical monument being first established as far back as 1895. The breathtaking view on top of Henderson Castle is the icing on the cake and a perfect way to end your Valentine's Day. So we have a 10 room now where we can sleep up to 26 people um, when the castle is fully booked. And then uh, people can, uh, for Valentine, uh, buy a romantic package uh, which are online where you can include the night stay, dinner, massage, Henderson Castle is not the only place that you and your day can go for Valentine's Day. Airway Lanes, located in Portage, has a ton of great activities for you and your day to enjoy. Not too bad. While there, I got the chance to play some games myself, getting very competitive. Airway Lanes has activities such as go-karting, bumper cars, laser tag, giveaway prizes, and much more. They also just opened a sports bar so called Spitfire. Totally sweet, they've got like flashing tops and whatnot. So and then this is also this is something new that we just introduced. These are our shooter balls. So and obviously it's a bowling ball with a whole bunch of shot glasses in it. So Wine tasting, shooting range, ice skating, or the classic dinner in a movie are some other options you can look into this V-Day. Well, thanks, and I hope you guys found some great ideas that you'll put into use this Valentine's Day. I'm Julene reporting for WeTV. Back to you.
Hey, where are you going? Public Media Network. Alright, see you later. Bye. Also this Valentine's Day, we will see more than just roses and chocolate. We'll see a worldwide movement. February 14th is V-Day, also known as One Billion Rising, a worldwide demonstration, strike, and flash mob. V-Day was conceived by Eve Ensler, author of the Vagina Monologues. The movement is a reaction to violence against women. Statistics say that one in three women will be abused in their lifetime, which is nearly one billion women. On the 14th, there will be two V-Day events in Kalamazoo the first of which will be a flash mob on Western's campus, arranged by Women's Equality Club and the Theater for Community Health. The V-Day flash mob dance will be performed at 11.50 a.m. at the flagpoles and 1.50 p.m. at the fountain. The second event will be held in Bronson Park, Bandshell, at 4.30 p.m., where the V-Day flash mob will be performed, which will be preceded by a march downtown and through Michigan Avenue. To show your support, wear red and black on the 14th and visit onebillingrising.org for more information. And now here's Vance with sports. Good afternoon, Western. Hope you guys are keeping warm because I know I'm struggling to. Even though it's a cold winter, sports are still popping on Western's campus. So we're going to try to warm you guys up with this quick sports segment. The men's basketball team is balling right now. We are currently in first place in the MAC West Division and third in the MAC overall. I will have to say this is the best basketball I've seen in a long time. If we keep this up, we're going to be dancing in March. The women's basketball team is in a drought right now. The season is far from over, but it's not looking good. We're on the outside looking in. But if we, but if we can finish the season strong and win the MAC tournament, you should be able to see us dancing in March. Let's go, ladies. It's not over yet. Also, the hockey team is playing like a team on a mission right now. We have looked very impressive on the ice, I would have to say. If you haven't got a chance to see these boys skate, you need to. We have pulled off some big wins this season, such as beating Michigan University three out of four times. We are sitting in first place in the CCHA looking to and looking to maintain that status. I'm riding the Van Broncos wagon all the way to the Frozen Four. And a quick side note, if you haven't heard, Western has finally named the head football coach, P.J. Fleck. Coach Fleck was a wide receiver coach at Rutgers University. And from there, he spent one year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as their wide receiver position coach. And now at the age of 32, Fleck has become the youngest coach in college football and the 15th coach in Western Michigan University. With no head coaching experience, the pressure is on. Show me something, coach. The last time we won a MAC championship was in 1988. I'm not saying we need to win, win one this year, but the university and the city of Kalamazoo deserve something. Bring football back to the zoo. Many of you may not know that WNU has a very successful rugby team. And as a matter of fact, players have a modest reaction to their recent invitation to the 2013 USA 7th Rugby Tournament. There were a total of 17 players all of which were led by the WMU coach, Mark Allen. Your Broncos will be the only collegiate level team participating in the men's open tournament and will be competing against teams including the U.S. Air Force, Boss Tweeds 7th, and the New York Big Dogs. Your Broncos finished 5-1, taking third place, outscoring their opponents 175-75. to For exact scores from the game, visit USA 7th. Dot com. Well, I'm Vance Gilwin with Today's Sports. Stay warm, and it's a great day to be a Bronco. Now here's your student scoop. Follow along as we listen to what your WMU peers had to say about a heated topic, student parking. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Hello, I'm Madison Schaefer reporting for VTV. Follow me as we go get students' thoughts on parking on campus. Yeah. Even if you get a $300 parking Yes. Do you have a parking pass yourself? Yeah. Have you had any bad experiences with um, ticketing or anything on campus? Um, I've actually had like four tickets this 
this year. Oh, to parking. Uh, they're kind of really strict about parking in certain areas, and it's ridiculous how much you have to pay for it, and you can't park forever on campus. Do you have any suggestions on how they can make it better for the students? Um, I think you they should make it like an all like access one where you can park forever because $300 is a lot to only park in yeah. about six parking spots. Alright, thank you. Right, thank you. Alright, could you just give me your brief thoughts on student parking here at Western? I don't feel like there's enough student parking here campus. I know a bunch of people getting parking tickets and they can really affect people's graduation. Could you just give me some scenarios of those experiences your friends have had with ticketing here? Well, I've parked in the overnight parking and I parked there overnight and I got a parking ticket. Do you have any suggestions as how Western could, uh, campus could make the parking better? Lower the price of the parking pass and uh, make it more acceptable, acceptable for uh, more people to park on campus. Sometimes I find myself wandering the streets of the city, admiring all the sights and sounds of the downtown area. As I venture sidewalks and crosswalks, the things I see around me come to exist as one in a scene grouping a hundred stories into one. I've always wanted others to see what I see and allow them to understand how the world exists through my eyes. Unfortunately, I've always had to deal with the reality that my thoughts enter my mind never to return to the world that created them. I knew there had to be a way to share my experiences with those around me, so I began to search for an outlet. And then I found Public Media Network. At Public Media Network, I have a hands-on experience shooting video on location in the studio and editing in one of the many Final Cut suites. I have access to all the equipment and software I need with well-trained professionals that assist me with any complications I may have. Thanks to PMN, I can finally share my vision with those in my community with complete creative control. Here at Public Media Network, every voice matters. There's a cool student hangout stirring up the town, and you'll love the things they're using to do it. WeTV's Pasha Ship has the story. All Stirred Up is a cafe just off Western's campus in the Video Hits video store that caters to what students crave, sweets. Melinda Figgins, owner of All Stirred Up, gave WeTV the scoop on what All Stirred Up is all about. We are a cafe here on campus. We also have a store in the Crossroads Mall, the kiosk there. And here on campus, we're really set up for students to, and anyone, to come and hang out and use our Wi-Fi and meet people, um, meet groups. It's really a come and stay for a while kind of place. So we have um, food, um, an awesome create your own panini menu. We have smoothies, and teas, and of course coffees, um, specialty baked goods, homemade baked goods, um, and it's, it's fun. It's just a fun, a fun menu and a fun place. I and many students would agree with her. The environment is relaxed and conducive to studying, which makes All Stirred Up the perfect place to hang out, study, and have fun. This location, it's mostly students and people affiliated with Western. So we get um, professors, we get um, people that work on campus, uh, definitely students. We get a lot actually 
um, students and teacher or students and professors meeting here. So whether it's like the writing center or um, tutoring of some sort, mm -hmm. um, but we often see students meeting uh, professors, and you see a lot of people sitting at the tables with their laptop and their books, and you know. Um, so mostly any anybody associated with Western people who work in the area as well. So, if you're looking for a place to have sweet treats or just hang out, mix up your day with All Stirred Up. I'm Pasha Ship for Western Entertainment Television. WMU is having the 35th annual Career Fair, hosted by Career and Student Employment Services. The fair is on Valentine's Day, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., located in the Bernhard Center. Cool. Well, if you have an interest in broadcasting, submit a one-minute package on a story of your choice. YBOT's Search for the Spot competition will pick four winners to be in this very spot as a leading anchor. Visit ybotconnects.wordpress.com for more information. Many celebs walked away winners this weekend at the 55th annual Grammy Awards. Visit the YBOT Facebook page to dish on who you feel should or should not have won. As some of you may know, there is currently a state of emergency along the East Coast. Weather conditions have been harsh, and we here in the Midwest haven't had it too well either, as Western had their very first snow day this past week. If you're interested in joining YBOT, come out to the Tuesday night meetings every week, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. in the Bernhard Center in room 105. See you there. Thank you for joining us for WE TV. I'm John Carroll. And I'm Jenna Gonzalez. Connecting, Connecting you, you to WMU. WMU. Connect to your neighborhood. We estimate there are 12,000 households with dogs in, in the city of Kalamazoo. Connect to your school. We do a fresh food bar every day in all of our elementary schools. Connect to your government. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Connect to your community. We partner with agencies that can help you when the wolf is at your door. Connect 